Algebra 1, 8.4c, we are now at finding quadratic equations given its solutions. We have eight previous videos for this chapter, and if you become lost or confused or you've missed any, just click in the description and you can find out what you missed. We can use the principle of zero products to write a quadratic equation whose solutions are given or known. Here we've got a quadratic equation in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and it can be expressed as x squared plus the quotient of b and a x plus the quotient of c and a, and that equals zero. We can find a quadratic equation whose sum of the roots are four and the product of the roots is seven. For the first term, for the first degree term, I should say, we put the four, and for the constant, we put the seven. Now we had a theorem in the previous video, and I rewrote it here for the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, that standard form of a quadratic equation. The sum of the solutions is going to be a negative b over a, that's this b over that a, and it's a negative, and the product of the solutions is going to be c over a, which is this constant over that a, that second degree coefficient right here, okay? So we can find a quadratic equation whose solutions are 3 and negative 2 fifths. We set it as x equals 3 or x equals negative 2 fifths. Using additive inverses, we add a negative 3 to each side so we can have x minus 3 equals 0. And because this is a negative, we add 2 fifths to each side so we get x plus 2 fifths equals 0 using the principle of zero products. Now that we've got these two, we can multiply them, we can FOIL them. So we get x squared plus 2 fifths x minus 3x minus 6 fifths equals 0. We need a common denominator to add these two guys together to combine like terms. So we can set it at 5, so we're going to multiply that 3 by 5, which is a 15 fifths now and we get x squared minus 13 fifths x minus 6 fifths equals 0. Now, as we said in the last video, we don't usually leave it this way. We usually write them as integer coefficients, and we get rid of these rational numbers, these fractions. So we can multiply every single term by 5, which is the least common denominator, and we get 5 times x squared minus 5 over 1 times 13 over 5, x minus 5 over 1 times 6 over 5. And when we do our little multiplication, we get six, a negative 65 fifths here, x, and a negative 30 fifths here, which can be simplified as 5x squared minus 13x minus 6 equals 0. And we found our quadratic equation. See? So what we did was... We had our two values right here. We set them so that they equaled x. Then we used the principle of zero products. We foiled them. We simplified it. And we set the rational terms into integer coefficients by finding that least common denominator and mul multiplying every single term. Make sure you multiply each term by that LCD, OK? Now, when radicals are involved, sometimes it's easier to use the properties of the sum and the product. So we can find the quadratic equation whose solutions are 2 plus the square root of 5 and 2 minus the square root of 5. We're going to let the solutions be x sub 1 and x sub 2. Remember we talked about that several times? This is a subscript, so that tells us it's the first one and that's the second one. We saw that in the slope formula and stuff, right? So. If we're going to have the sum of them, then we need to add these two together. So we're going to have x sub 1 plus x sub 2 is going to equal 2 plus the square root of 5 plus 2 minus the square root of 5. Well, this and this makes a zero pair, doesn't it? That's an additive inverse, so we just end up with a 4. And that's for finding the sum of the solution, that negative b over a. Now we need to find the c over a, that product. So now we're going to take the x sub 1 multiplied by x sub 2. I'm going to FOIL this. And when we do, we get these two middle terms are additive inverses of each other, so we can eliminate them. And we're going to subtract the square root of 5 squared, which is a square root of 25, isn't it? Which is a 5. So we have 4 minus 5, which is a negative 1. 
Now, using our theorem from over here, from our previous video, this theorem, we're going to substitute in our values here, and we've got a 4 and a negative 1. So we put our 4 here and our negative 1 here, and that's going to make this a negative 4, and when we add a negative 1, that's going to be minus 1, isn't it? So we found our quadratic equation. It's x squared minus 4 minus 1 equals 0. Okay? All right. Our next video is 8.5a. We're going to use substitution for a quadratic form. And I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. There's the links in this description to last year's Algebra 1 for Chapter 13 that talked about quadratic equations and discriminants and formulas, and all those previous videos for Chapter 8. If you're lost or confused, you can just watch those, click on the description, and then click on the link of the ones that you think will help you, or watch all the videos for Chapter 8 if you really want to understand what's going on. All right? I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next video. Bye.